Hello everyone, thanks for joining us at 2021 Asri Virtual Developer Summit. My name is Jay Zhang, and here with me is my colleague Hao Hu, and we are the product engineers from Esri development teams. In today's workshop, we're going to talk about advanced techniques of uh, using ArcGIS provided Python API to design and develop advanced custom raster processing uh, methods. So here's a quick agenda of the things we're going to cover today. We're going to introduce different uh, Python APIs offered by ArcGIS for raster processing analysis. And there is uh, two sets of API that is, that is offered by uh, ArcGIS, the ArcGIS API for Python and ArcPy uh, Python modules. We're also going to cover uh, the usage of Python raster function to design uh, custom algorithms that does not offer by ArcGIS uh, for image processing uh, as raster functions. And uh, we're going to show you a couple examples utilizing raster objects and a pixel block operations and raster cell operations uh, to, to write your own uh, pixel array processing or, or raster cell processing algorithms. And that can be implemented using the ArcPy uh, Python module. And then we're going to dig in a little bit deeper into the Python raster functions, anatomy, and the APIs. And we'll talk about how to write, use, and deploy Python raster function so it can be used in your desktop application, such as ArcGIS Pro or ArcGIS Server. So let's do a quick comparison of a different type of Python API provided by ArcGIS. Uh, there are two sets of Python, uh, there are two main sets of Python APIs offered by ArcGIS products. There's this ArcGIS uh, API for Python, which is uh, essentially uh, a Python module that uh, uh, you can use to work with ArcGIS Enterprise and ArcGIS Online. Uh, it pro provides methods uh, and functions to uh, submit remote processing requests to ArcGIS Enterprise. Uh, Raster Analytics servers or ArcGIS Online analysis servers, and it also contains modules to perform some administrative works on uh, enterprise uh, data contents. And on the other hand, there is also uh, ArcGIS API uh, contains in the ArcPy modules. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with the ArcPy modules, um, you will know that the ArcPy module is offered through. Uh, the ArcGIS desktop apps such as ArcGIS Pro and ArcMap and it's also available uh, through ArcGIS server setup and in the hosted notebook server advanced runtime. And what you can use ArcPy API for is uh, to perform local processing and analysis on uh, raster data. And here are some links that you can check out uh, to learn more about those APIs. Now, in the first sessions, I like to focus on ArcPy's advanced functionalities that allows you to perform uh, raster processing and analysis using custom algorithms. A quick uh, introduction uh, or overview of what ArcPy offers in terms of uh, uh, raster data processing analysis functionalities. Um, ArcPy offers uh, some first class, uh, class objects such as raster and raster infos to describe the data sets uh, in the APIs. And there is also um, native functions such as list rasters, numpy array to raster, raster numpy arrays uh, to exploit the raster data set in workspaces and convert the raster to numpy arrays. You can also describe the uh, raster data set information model, uh, raster catalog and raster bank information model uh, to get more uh, metadata information from these data sets. And the ArcPy APIs um, provide uh, classes and methods and functions through different um, ArcGIS Pro extensions. There's image analyst extension that offers the access to pixel block and pixel block collection and raster collections. And it also contains over 70 different uh, raster functions where you can apply it on the raster object. And also 21 different uh, operators to do arithmetic uh, computation of pixels uh, 
uh, between the raster data sets. And on the other side, there is also, uh, you can also find uh, functions, functionality available under the spatial analysis extensions. The raster cell iterator class is offered by spatial analysis extension. And you can also find similar functionalities that shared with image analyst extension uh, and also uh, similar operators that is available uh, as well in image analyst extensions. And not to mention that ArcPy also contains uh, native methods for uh, over 90 different image analyst tools and 200 spatial analysis tools. The dual processing tools uh, can be invoked through the ArcPy API as well. Now let's look at a little bit uh, deeper into the raster object and image analyst extensions. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, if you uh, are interested in utilizing the API to develop uh, custom analytic workflows rather than using the other box tools, uh, there are some classes in the ArcPy uh, APIs you can use. Uh, for example, the raster object, uh, it is used to describe the single raster data set. And uh, it is being enhanced uh, to support multi-dimensional raster data set as well. And you can query metadata information uh, with the raster info class. For example, if you want to extract bank count uh, or pixel types from the raster object, uh, you, can, you can use the raster info uh, class. Um, there's also classes that uh, uh, allows you to create a raster collection from a group of raster datasets and then use the raster collection object uh, to perform a group raster analysis such as uh, compute the sum of the pixels from a collection of imageries. And there's also a lot of building functions um, that can be invoked from the Occupy API to perform uh, on-the-fly processings and analysis on the raster object as well. Now the tools we want to emphasize today to allow you to develop custom algorithms, uh, custom analysis algorithms on the raster data is the pixel block and pixel block collections. And pixel block collections basically allows you to um, iterate through uh, the rasters uh, and to create a collection of pixel block objects in raster or in a single raster or from a, a list of rasters, a collection of rasters. Uh, if you do need um, overlapped pixels uh, between adjacent pixel blocks, you can also use the stride parameters uh, to define uh, the amount of the overlaps. And pixel block is basically uh, the sm smallest unit you can use um, for processing and analysis to for processing and implement the analysis algorithms on. And pixel block is essentially a block of pixels read from a raster with the defined size. It is flexible enough for you to define um, any custom size that you want to uh, read from the imagery uh, in one take. And uh, pixel block also support multi-dimensional blocks that contains uh, time dimension or other uh, vertical dimensions and uh, could also be coming from uh, multiple variables. Now let's look at a simple example of utilizing pixel block and pixel block collection uh, to, to implement a custom raster processing uh, workflows. Um, this example is called a species distribution model. In this Python notebook, I'm implementing a workflow to uh, compute the probability of uh, uh, habitants for a particular type of uh, uh, sloths living in South America. And this sloth is called uh, Bodipus variegatus, or brown sloth sloths. And the way, the method I use to compute the probability is, is called the species diffusion modeling. It is using um, the past observation location of a particular type of species and uh, uh, a series of uh, environment variable rasters to compute the probability values. And 
in the workflow, it is using the sample tool uh, through the ArcGIS API uh, to take pixel samples from the 14 variable rasters on the location where past observation uh, uh, is occurred, was occurred. And then we feed those pixel values uh, into this uh, one class SVM classifier uh, provided by scikit-learn Python module to train the classifiers. And once we have a train classifiers, then uh, we can use, use it to predict uh, the future suitability values or probability values and uh, uh, write that probability values into a new raster data set, uh, pixel block by pixel block. So before I get started, I need to import uh, the module that I need to use in this example. Occupy is, uh, Occupy's pixel block is uh, the method I want to use. So I need to include Occupy and also the SVM module uh, from the scikit-learn Python uh, package. And I also need to check out the image analysis extension because the pixel and pixel uh, block uh, collection uh, classes are only available under the image analysis extension. And first of all, we, we need to import some input data. Um, here I have a photo that I have a folder that contains the 14 variables rasters. They're all in TIFF format, so I can just use the list raster plus the extension filter to find all of them. And then next, uh, I want to get all these uh, previous observation locations from a feature class, uh, which is the shape files. Then I'll define the method to do the sampling of the pixel value from variable uh, rasters. I'll use the uh, presence point, uh, which is the feature class that we just loaded. And then we create a uh, random DBF point, uh, random table, uh, temporary uh, DBF point to store those uh, uh, sample values. And then I'll be calling the sample tools uh, under the uh, IA uh, image analysis extension with the inverter variables raster as inputs and also uh, the presence point feature class and then output to these temporary tables. And once I have the table created, uh, I'll be using the search cursor to read uh, the, the values, uh, the sample values from the table and and put them into a Python list using the pen method. And then I no longer need this table and just remove it. Then eventually I'll be uh, converting the sample values into a NumPy array for, for the use uh, of in the next steps. And then I um, use this method to extract the features, basically uh, the sample points that I'm going to use uh, to train the SVM models. And the next step is uh, actually defining the training methods. We use uh, the 30% of the data for testing and 70% for the training. And we need to feed all those training records to the format that will be uh, acceptable by the SVM, uh, shuffle it using the NumPy render methods, and then uh, just distribute it the 30% uh, uh, for testing and 30% for training. Then we feed this um, array, uh, we reconstruct the array to standardize it, right, and uh, compute the mean and standard deviation, and then uh, feed it into the SVM, uh, one class uh, uh, SVM uh, training master to train the models. Once the training is completed, I'll be using this uh, classifier uh, to actually process the pixels. And the, the next step, uh, once we have the model chained, the next step is to create the output raster. I want to create my output raster data set um, uh, in the same uh, form, in the same extent and the format of my environment variable raster, which is covering the entire South, uh, South America. Right, so I'll be creating a raster object um, using the one of the environment variable raster as a template. And then I can define the raster info information, uh, such as the bank count, uh, which will be one. The cell size will be the same as 
uh, one of the environment variables. And then I'll, I'll also compute the, I'll also define the output rasters uh, within the same extent as uh, the input raster, same spatial reference, and same pixel type. Then I'll be creating this output rasters just by applying a constant raster function, uh, setting all the pixel value to zero first. Then I want to save out this uh, raster data set on the disk uh, as, a tif, uh, as a TIFF file first. I will unset the read-only flag so that we can uh, write the pixel block. And then we also set node available to zero. And then the last step is uh, we want to iterate through all the pixel blocks in my output raster. And also, at the same time, reading in the input environment variable rasters, applying the classifier, and then to compute the output probabilities values. We'll define the pixel block size as uh, 512 by 512 and define no data value as minus uh, uh, 128, which is the uh, no data values for uh, the ocean areas in my environment variable uh, rasters. Then I'll create a pixel block collection first and uh, 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 looping through all these uh, environment variable rasters and creating uh, each raster object for them respectively, and then uh, defining the pixel block size and no data size. So this pixel block collection actually contains um, uh, all the pixels uh, from the 14 different environment variable rasters. And I'm going to loop through the pixel blocks in the pixel block collection. The pixel blocks is, um, we also need to uh, go through them one by one for each variable. Right? So we just uh, get a NumPy array from uh, each pixel blocks from uh, the pixel block collections. And then we also create an output pixel block to store our output values. And we'll feed it uh, the value as uh, one for now. Uh, we feed it as value of zero for now. Yeah. We'll define the output NumPy type to float 64. And then last step is uh, we want to predict the probability values uh, for the output pixel block NumPy array uh, by, by using the CLF, CLF uh, the uh, classifier uh, decision functions. And just feeding in the input variable values and uh, filter out the values where uh, it is no data then applying the formula, uh, and then uh, write out the probability value output pixel block. And once we have uh, looped through all this no, non-no data pixel values, then uh, we're ready to write out the rasters. So this output raster write methods basically write uh, the output pixel blocks one by one, uh, and then eventually uh, uh, my output TIFF files as pixel data will be updated with the probability values. And then we want to compute the, the statistic for the um, output rasters once they finish writing. And then we can visualize it. Um, we can use the uh, image analyst uh, render method to apply a simple min max stretch render plus a color map on the image. And the image will be looking like this. So as you can see, uh, the best habitat for this type of sloth is uh, uh, mainly uh, concentrated on the Amazon for rainforest areas. Now that through this example, you know how you can utilize pixel block and pixel block collections to uh, design your own uh, custom pixel processing uh, workflows. Next, I'll hand it over to my colleague Hao here, and he will be talking about uh, the usage case for raster cell iterators under the spatial analysis extension. Okay, thank you, Jie. Raster cell iterator is another powerful class in Occupy we released in Pro 2.5 that allows you to do custom raster data analysis in Python. 
For simplicity, sometimes we just call it RCI. RCI allows you to visit each cell in a Rust object by row column indices and read write cell values. Because of the ability to access cell values, it provides a lot of possibilities for custom Rust analysis. Also, RCI supports iterating multiple Rust datasets and perform analysis at the same location, so that you are not limited to only using one Rust dataset in your custom analysis. And access to cell values at each location, neighboring location, is efficient. Here, what I mean by efficient is from the performance perspective and the underlying implementation, RCI leveraged pixel block that has already been loaded in memory to guarantee efficient read-write access. Okay. Uh, lastly, RCI is available through the Spatial Analyst module, although you don't need to have Spatial Analyst extension to use it. Bottom here is a basic signature of RCI. It takes a dictionary input with two parameters. First is a list of rasters that you want to iterate through. The second part is uh, the second parameter is padding. Padding factor expands the internal pic pixel block size, which I'll explain more later. Okay, here are some general steps to use RCI. Step one, you need to create an empty output raster with Rust info object. This Rust info object contains property information of a raster. It can be created in two different ways. First, it can be generated from an existing raster. Also, you can construct it from scratch. On the right, there are two code snippets showing you how to do it in two different ways. Step two is to define a Rust style iterator to iterate over a Rust dataset. Okay, this step is pretty straightforward. Step three is to loop through the cells of raster to perform read-write operations. Here I have three additional nodes. First, if you want to access cell value of a multi-band raster, you need to have a band index before your row and column index. Okay. Secondly, you can also access neighboring values by using relative indices. Third, so if you only deal with one raster in your analysis, you can actually use RCI in an implicit way. So to be more specific, in your for loop, you don't have to loop through an RCI object. You can directly loop through the Rust object. Step four is to save the analysis output. This can be done by calling the save method of your output raster object. Okay. So OCR can be used to solve a lot of problems. Here I list two examples among many of them. On the left is to create a new raster with a specific pattern, like a checkerboard pattern. This type of question requires to establish a relationship between pixel values and its row column indices. With RCI, each time when you access a pixel value, you get the row column information. So this can be done fairly easy with RCI. On the right is an example of custom focal operations. For example, you want to count the number of neighboring cells that have a different value to the center cell. RCI is very suitable to tackle this type of question too. I will show you more details about this two example in the demo. Okay? But before we dive into the demo, I have one slide talking a little bit more about the technical details of RCI. That is how RCI visits each cell in a raster. You may wonder what kind of sequence RCI is used to iterate through Rust cells, where it starts what is padding, as I mentioned earlier, and why it matters. I hope this slide will help you answer those questions. So first, as mentioned earlier, when iterating through a raster data, RCI leverage pixel block to make sure access to individual cell is efficient. This is because when RCI iterates through each pixel block, that pixel block is already loaded into the memory. Okay, so for example, we have this Rust data here, and the pixel block size is 128 by 128. RCR starts from the top left corner and goes through each cell in the pixel block row by row, like this, indicated in the green arrow. Okay, but notice that when it arrives at the edge of a pixel block, for example, the bottom right cell here is highlighted in green, 
Okay. Now, if I want to perform a focal analysis using a three by three window, it will try to access cells that are outside of the current pixel block. Okay. So this could be very inefficient because cell three, five, six, seven, eight might be in pixel blocks that have not been loaded into the memory. Therefore, we introduce the padding parameter. Okay. This padding parameter will expand the internal pixel block size to guarantee that cells that will be accessed are in the memory. Okay. Now the pixel block of 128 of 128 are expanded to 130 by 130 if the padding factor is set as 1. Now let's dive into the demo. Okay. Um, in this Jupyter Notebook, I have two case studies. The first one is to create a new roster with a checkerboard pattern. It is useful in atmospheric modeling. Sometimes a heterogeneous surface roster represented by a checkerboard pattern can be used as an initial condition for idealized model simulation. So let's create one using RCI. I need to import relevant module first. And if you remember from the slide, the first step is to create a Rust Info object. That Rust Info object will have some basic uh, Rust data properties. Here I'm created from scratch. Okay. And then I'm going to use that Rust Info object to create a new empty Rust object. For this case study, I'm only dealing with one raster. So I'm going to use RCI in an implicit way. So in the for loop, I'll directly loop through my Rust object. I'm creating the checkerboard pattern by assigning uh, cell value to 1 when the row and column indices satisfy certain criteria and otherwise I'll set, assign the cell value to zero. Okay. Finally, I'm persisting my output data. Let's take a look. It's just simple as that. Okay. Now, um, the second case study, I'm going to count the number of neighboring cells that have a different value from the center cell. This is from a paper that aims to calculate the compactness of cities using land use adjacency information. To derive the compactness metric, one of the preprocessing steps is to iterate through the land use data and count the number of neighboring cells that have a different value to the central value. As you can see, this is customized focal operation. Uh, to better understand this figure, uh, on the top left is input, right? Uh, those numbers represent cell values. For example, this, in this case, the center, ca uh, center value is 5. We want to know the number of uh, neighboring cell, cell values have a different value uh, than 5. In this case, it's 8. In the bottom example, similar idea, the number of cells that has a different value than the center cell is 6. Okay. The uh, idea is pretty simple. Well, let's implement it with RCI. And in this time, this time I'm going to create the new empty output raster using the Rust info from an existing raster. As you can see, I'm reading from a land use data and use the Rust info object from that land use data to create a new temporary output raster. Okay. By doing that, my output Rust will have the same structure and Rust properties as a land use data. Okay. This time I have to explicitly create the Rust cell iterator object because you know I have two rasters I want to iterate through. One is the input land use, another is the output count raster. So within the cell uh, iterator, I um, initialize the count as zero, and I only care about those cells um, that is not no, is that that is not no data. Okay. Then I'm creating a moving window. Here I'm trying to access 
the neighboring cell by the relative indices. Okay. So if the neighboring cell is not null and it has a different value as the center cell, I will increase the count as one. And finally, I'm assigning the count value to the output cell at that location. Okay. Now I'm saving my output and let's take a look at our output. You can see here I'm using a continuous blue uh, color map. So the dark blue here represents a high number of um, different value counts. And the white value here basically means your central value has the same value as your neighboring cells. Okay. Those are two of my case study. Now I'm going to hand back to Jie. Right. Thanks, Hal, for the demos on raster cell iterators uh, offered by Spatial Analysis Extension. The next thing I want to talk about is the Python raster function. So Python raster function is essentially the third way uh, that we introduced today you can use to implement your custom image processing and uh, analysis algorithms. Uh, this is actually not a set of API offered through our ArcPy Arc Arc module or ArcGIS API for Python modules. Um, it is basically a, a way that defined by ArcGIS to write a Python class uh, that contains the uh, certain required uh, class methods and your algorithm uh, for the imagery processing. And then um, when ArcGIS need to uh, invoke those Python code defined a special Python class, or we'll use the building Python runtime and a first class Python adapter function uh, to uh, connect with other uh, raster functions uh, within the ArcGIS ecosystems. And the uh, Python raster function, once defined and uh, uh, introduced into the ArcGIS, and then it can be used in combination with other uh, building, existing building system raster functions. Uh, for example, you can create a raster function template that combines the building raster function and a custom Python raster function to create a uh, uh, even more complex analytic workflows. This is what a Python uh, raster function uh, raster function template looks like. You can create a raster function template that uh, utilizes the building uh, system functions. But if uh, some functionalities are not offered by uh, the building system function, you can use um, you can write a Python raster function class and insert a Python adapter function uh, system function to the function chain, and the Python adapter function uh, will be able to. Uh, uh, in order to create this Python adapter function, you need to specify the Python raster function class uh, Python files. And then with this uh, function template created, uh, you can use it with the raster dataset, mosaic dataset items, uh, mosaic dataset, or even image service, just like any other uh, raster function templates. So let's go through the APIs you can use to write uh, the custom Python raster functions. For every Python raster function class, you need to define a init method, which basically uh, uh, defines the name of the raster function. And you can also write a short description uh, to describe what this raster function does and how you can use it for. And there's also uh, this get parameters info method. Essentially, uh, it's the method that allows you to define what type of, what type of input parameters you want this uh, raster function to accept. This is similar to uh, defining parameters for a Python scripting tools. You need to give a name for the parameters, um, identifier name, and a display name. And you can also write a description describing what this uh, parameter is full. And then uh, you can set the, the data type, uh, can be raster, a numerical value, string value, etc. Uh, you can also define uh, a default value or decided on 
whether it should be a uh, required parameter or an optional parameter. And then you have uh, also have a method called the get configuration method to decide uh, how you want the input raster to be read, whether you want to apply a mask or apply a pixel paddings. And you can also use the same method to decide how the output rasters can be constructed, uh, whether you want to inherit the no data value from the input or uh, some metadata information from the input uh, rasters. Uh, the get configuration method was given nothing, but uh, it allows you, uh, after you finish the configuration, it returns a dictionary that contains uh, the attribute values. And if you raster functions, if you pass on raster functions, can accept uh, a list of raster inputs, the select raster methods allows you to define a subset of the input. Uh, uh, once you defined, uh, once you select and defined uh, the rasters you want to uh, pick and process from the input raster, from multiple input raster, the pixels will only be read from the selected rasters. And this method was given the properties of all the requested pixel block and all the scalar uh, parameter values. And what it returns is the name of selected rasters. And then, uh, obviously, uh, after you're writing out your output, you want to define some uh, raster info properties, such as uh, number of bands, uh, color map, etc. Right? You can use the update raster info method to do that. Um, the, update, uh, the update raster info method will actually be invoked every time uh, when the new data set containing that Python raster function is being initialized. So what this method is being uh, given is the raster info information associated with all uh, input rasters uh, to the function. And then uh, you can uh, process those input raster infos and decide on what kind of uh, raster info uh, you want to define for the output raster and uh, have, have it returned from this method. And the most important uh, class method of the Python raster function class is the update pixels method. Basically, this method is the workhorse of the raster function. It allows you to write uh, your custom image processing analysis algorithm to process the pixel blocks. And what this function is given is the uh, pixel blocks, uh, input pixel blocks that was passing in by the Python adapter function. And the pixel box size and locations, um, other information is given to this method. And uh, uh, the output uh, raster properties was also uh, given to this method. And pixels and masks of selected input rasters, if you have multiple raster inputs, uh, is also uh, available as input for this method. And then the return value will be the process the pixel blocks. Uh, that will be written into the output raster and the masks uh, of the requested pixel blocks. So basically how this method works is the Python adapter function uh, will be able to uh, uh, process the input raster's pixel block and then sending it down to the Python code as a NumPy array and then uh, you can use uh, uh, whatever methods you, you choose to use to process those pixels and return them out uh, as NumPy array to the output the pixel properties. And eventually after you finish processing the pixels, uh, you want to be able to update uh, additional key metadata information to the output rasters. The update key metadata information allows you to define um, any value of, of given properties or even create uh, new key metadata properties, such as you want to define uh, the band index, the name of uh, each bands, um, or you want to define unit of uh, uh, the output pixels. You know, it could be a temperature value or elevation value 
uh, in meters, you want to have those information returned to the output rasters. You can do it through this method. And eventually, you can also control um, how this function can be used based on uh, the user's license levels. The is license method basically uh, gets the information on the parent product. For example, if you're running the Python raster function in Arcturus Pro, uh, the method will be able to detect the license level of your Arcturus Pro uh, product and uh, uh, it also get a context of the execution environment. Um, you can decide on whether it's okay to run this particular uh, type of raster function based on uh, the license of the product or not. So this is a quick example, hello world example, uh, of a simplest uh, Python raster function you can write. Uh, in this Python raster function, you can define the name as uh, hello world function. And then uh, you can define that this function will take a single raster input. And what you want to do with the raster input is to process the input pixel block, adding all pixel values by 10, and return them out as the output pixel block values. Let's use this compound topographic index example to show how you can write a Python raster function uh, to add additional capabilities uh, into ArcGIS, which is not provided by the system building raster functions. The compound topographic index um, was described by uh, T.R. Mueller in this 2015 paper. It is also referred to as the topographic wetness index. This index is commonly used to identify uh, the spatial scale effect on hydrology process and the hydrology flow pass uh, for ge geochemical modelings. And uh, uh, it can also be uh, used to uh, characterize the biology process, such as this uh, annual crop production, uh, vegetation patterns, and forest site qualities. The formula to use the CTI, uh, to compute the CTI, the total compound topography index, uh, from the raster data is that it takes uh, a flow accumulation raster uh, uh, pixel value as input and also the slope value derived from hmm, digital elevation model data set. And then the result of the CTI is natural logarithm of uh, the computation of these two inputs. And if you want to create a workflow to uh, compute the CTI index, it could be looking like this. Uh, if you have a DM uh, elevation model raster and also a flow accumulation raster, you can combine this custom raster function, uh, the CTI custom raster function, with the system building function slope uh, to, complete, to complete the processing. And the core part of the CTI computation code is like this. We're taking the slope value, flow accumulation value, and the cell size of the rasters. We compute the tangent uh, value of the slope. And uh, because uh, it is possible the tangent value to be zero in some case, uh, so we need to set the zero value to a very small number to avoid the division errors. And then we use the, uh, the, the building uh, logarithm method uh, provided by the NumPy uh, Python module. Uh, to implement the formula uh, to compute the CDI output pixel values. Now let's look at the uh, Python raster function code to see how it was implemented. In this Python script, I wrote it, the uh, compound topography index custom Python raster function class. As I mentioned earlier, any uh, custom Python raster functions need to have an init method that identifies its name and the description about how you can use these functions and what this function does. And then you can use the getParameterInfo method to define the input parameters of the function. This function will require two parameters, uh, one for the slope raster, the other one for the flow accumulation rasters. 
It can also uh, set the direction uh, of the rasters uh, to be uh, required or optional and uh, add a description, shot description here. And then you can use the get configuration method to decide how you want to reading uh, the raster and how you want the output raster uh, to be written. In this example, uh, I'll be inheriting all the properties from the input rasters and invalidate certain properties such as static histogram because they will be recreated. And also, I don't want to use any mask. And then we can use the update raster info method to define output properties uh, of the CTI output rasters, uh, such as uh, the band number uh, should be 1, and the statistic of the output raster should be uh, a hard-coded value between 0 and 25. And we want to reset histogram and define output pixel type as uh, floating point. And the cell size um, will be the same as uh, the slope value cell size. So raster cell size. And the core of the Python raster function is defined in this update pixel method. The update pixel method basically um, uh, was given the input raster pixel block uh, like this. Yeah, you can read the pixel block uh, of the slope raster and the flow, uh, and the flow accumulation raster yeah, to a NumPy array. And then um, I'll be calling the calculate slope value to uh, compute the degree uh, slope value into radian uh, slope value, which is required by uh, the NumPy arrays uh, native methods, the tangent native methods. And then uh, I'll be calling the, uh, the utility function here to compute the CTI index. So this is the same code we saw earlier. We want to compute the tangent value of the slope and uh, uh, convert the zero value to a small number and then uh, use the formula to compute the CTI index output pixel block. And once we have the output pixel block, we want to set it as the output pixel block um, of this Python raster function. And then eventually, if you have additional uh, metadata that you want to assign to the output, and you can also do it through the update key metadata method. In this example, uh, I will define the band name to be CTI, and I also say the data type is scientific uh, data type. Now that I, uh, I've shown you this uh, Python script that defines the custom Python Rust function class, uh, if you want to use it in the uh, in ArcGIS Pro, uh, the way you want to do it is to uh, either create a, a, a raster function template and uh, uh, click this button to add the custom Python file to the function template and connect it with the system building slope function and your DM input and flow accumulation input to build your workflows. Once you have uh, created the Python, uh, once you have created this uh, custom uh, raster function template, click on it and then specify the input. I have a digital elevation field uh, raster in my map already, and also a flow accumulation raster in my map and simply uh, click on create new layers then it will compute the uh, compound topographic, topo topographic index raster uh, on the fly right away. As you can see here the high value um, identifies the wettest uh, area in this region. Now that you've seen a, uh, the CTI custom Python raster function example there are some additional considerations that I want to mention uh, for you when you're writing your custom Python raster functions. Obviously, performance is the most important factor when you're implementing your image processing organs, your organs in the Python raster function class. 
it is generally recommended not to use the ArcPy Python module or array loopings in the Python raster function code because uh, array looping is simply too slow in Python. And because the way uh, Python raster function works is that uh, in the Python, the first class Python adapter function will help reading the input raster dataset pixel block, convert it to NumPy array, and then send it down to uh, the actual Python code uh, in your uh, Python raster function class. So it is generally recommended you to use uh, the native uh, Python libraries such as NumPy and SciPy, uh, which are already optimized to uh, work with NumPy arrays. And also, if you are thinking about implementing uh, the function using SciSum, uh, through our testings, we actually did not see uh, significantly performance improvements, even when you are implementing the Python uh, Python raster function code using the SciSum standard. So just um, keep in mind that you want to leverage uh, anywhere now options to optimize the time critical part of your raster function code, especially in the update pixel uh, update pixel block methods. And once you have uh, uh, finished writing your custom Python Rush functions, there are several things you want to uh, watch out for when you uh, decide to publish or deploy the function de template that contains the Python raster functions. Uh, you need to be aware that uh, the current ArcGIS Pro release and ArcGIS Server 10.9 release um, has the Python version bump up to 3.7.9. And uh, it is generally recommend you to uh, deploy the Python scripts of the Python raster function class in a trusted location. In ArcGIS, we actually defined uh, several designate locations as the trusted locations if the Python script are live under those folders, are living under those folders. In ArcGIS Pro, uh, it is under the installation folder of Pro resources and raster and function folders. You can already find some uh, system building Python raster functions there. And um, on ArcGIS server, if you want to use the uh, custom Python raster function on the server, uh, we actually have building logic to only execute raster functions uh, in the trusted locations. The trusted locations on server is under the server setup folder, um, which is server framework runtime ArcGIS resources and rasters and then functions folders. Any Python raster function script that uh, was deployed uh, other than these folders will be denied and you, you may be see, uh, you'll, you'll be seeing that if you want to use the Python raster function as rendering rule or for distributed analysis, if the uh, Python script are not under, under this trusted location, uh, the process will fail. And the server deployment, um, of Python Rush function need to be done on every server node if you have a server cluster. And uh, Python raster function is also supported through the distributed raster analysis. The distributed raster analysis is essentially um, uh, an object enterprise functionality that allows you to configure a server cluster that supports uh, parallel image analysis and processing workflows. Um, this is not the emphasis of our presentation today, so if you want to learn more about distributed Rust analytics, um, I suggest you check out this uh, uh, documentation link. And if you want to learn more about um, uh, the anatomy of raster function, uh, you're welcome to check out our GitHub page. Uh, it has already got a uh, library of different uh, custom Python raster functions that contributed by as we staff and also uh, external uh, personnel. And uh, uh, you can uh, go to the repo, you can uh, browse the existing examples in the repo and fork the repo, uh, fork the repo to experiment um, on those examples. And if you're seeing any defects or have any enhancement requests, you can submit issues uh, and even uh, send pull requests. Our staff uh, from uh, the imagery development team will, um, will uh, review those pull requests and also uh, welcome you to contribute to our repo.
Last but not least, I'd like to do a, a general comparison of all the three different techniques we introduced today for you to uh, write custom imagery processing and analytic workflows. We have pixel block, which is um, a way that you can define any size of pixel blocks uh, through the ArcPy APIs from the input raster and then perform your custom uh, analysis and, and processing algorithms on the pixel block and then uh, write, a, write a pixel block, process the pixel block to the output rasters. Um, this method is only available from the uh, image analyst extension and it is one-time processing and uh, there's no deployment requirement and, uh, and it can only happen locally. Uh, on the app where you uh, where you execute those code, and raster cell iterator introduced by uh, how is available from uh, Occupy spatial analysis extension. It is similar to the pixel block, but it is a raster cell based analysis uh, and uh, and the processings. It is also one time analysis. Uh, it, the code you wrote is not uh, is not uh, reusable. And uh, uh, there's also no deployment requirement, and owning uh, can support the local processing workflows. And as a full Python raster function, it provides a, a flexible way for you to uh, uh, write pixel block level analysis and image processing. And because it is a raster function, you can use it alongside with other uh, ArcGIS building system raster functions. Uh, within the raster function template. It is reusable. The code is reusable. And you can uh, even customize different license restrictions and uh, you can deploy your uh, Python raster functions to server to support both uh, local and remote uh, processing in scale. And also because it's a, uh, it's a raster function, uh, the way you use the raster function uh, can also uh, is that it also supports the on-the-fly visualization of the uh, of the processing result. We thank you for your interest in our workshops topic today. We introduced three different techniques uh, of utilizing the ArcGIS API, Python API, to develop your own uh, custom raster uh, processing analysis workflows. All the demo code we showed today uh, is downloadable from our GitHub page. Please check out this link and let us know if you have any uh, suggestions or feedbacks so that we can improve our sessions. Please don't forget to uh, submit your feedback from the sessions by clicking the session survey link directly below the videos. Thank you very much and I hope you enjoy the 2021 Virtual Esri Developer Summit. I'll see you next time.